Hey everyone, thank you for checking out another video. In this tutorial, I wanna talk a little bit about Perlin noise. It's a topic that's been covered by a lot of people and for very good reason. If you do any work at all in game development or generative art, you're gonna hear about Perlin noise at some point. It's a very fundamental algorithm that's used in countless projects and you may already have an idea of something you wanna use it for. So I'm just gonna give a really basic look at exactly what it is and maybe just a quick example of how you can use it. So hopefully that sounds fun. I've got a little bit of a project already set up. I am using processing, specifically the Python version. So you can go to processing.org, download Python, and install this Python module, or download processing, and then install this Python module over here. But I'll also put a link in the description. Right now, the only thing I have set up is literally set up function size 1750 so if I run this it's gonna be a white rectangle and that's because I'm set the background to 255 255 255 so now that that is out of the way just for a high level quick look all you really need to know to understand the concept of Perlin noise all it does is generate a value between 0 oops not 1 0, 0.0 and one and I put the 0, 0.0 I mean obviously that's zero but I just want to emphasize that it is a floating value which it would have to be if it's between zero and one so that doesn't really need to be said but you never know so it is between zero and one the power of Perlin noise is the transition between the values and that's why you'll see Perlin noise used to represent elevation extremely often because it's not it's not the same as just generating a random value between 0 and 1 it's transitioning and we have the ability to alter the speed of that transition by scaling in and out of the Perlin noise output that's a blurb if that makes sense then great but we're gonna take a look at exactly what that means so with this I wanna visualize it so I'm gonna draw a point at every pixel we're gonna tie the opacity value in with the Perlin noise value at that coordinate. So what that's gonna look like is we're gonna say fill, actually we're gonna say 4x in one range 1000, 4y in range 750. So we're just stepping through row by row through the square, the rectangle, and then we're gonna draw a point at each pixel but we want to color the point before we draw it so we have to say fill and since the background is white we're just gonna make the point black so the first three values are the RGB and then the fourth value is the opacity since Perlin noise is going to give us a value between 0 and 1 we're just gonna multiply the noise output by 255 which is the max value for the opacity and that essentially scales it to that 0 to 255 range. If the Perlin noise is 0, then the opacity will be equal to 0. If it's 1, then it'll be 255. Hopefully that makes sense. So we're going to say 255 multiplied by noise x, y. And it's literally as simple as that at this level. We're grabbing the color that way and we're tying it to the noise function, but we still need to draw the point. So we say point x y so if I run this I will see a black rectangle oh okay that's my fault so feel is how you would generally determine the color for a shape but since we are doing a point that means it's essentially the same thing as a, a stroke or a line a border around a shape so we, instead of doing feel we actually have to do stroke so same same exact logic but instead of using feel we use stroke and now okay so now we see Perlin noise you can not really use this for anything just because of how I mean you can see there's this cool little pattern or whatever it's repeating this is Perlin noise but it's not really useful and one of the reasons for that is because we haven't zoomed in I say zoomed in we're just gonna scale these X and Y values so that we're looking at a very small portion so right now we're literally going from you know zero 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 one zero two but we want to get much more granular than that so we're gonna define a value up top 
we're going to say noise scale equals 0 0.0, let's say 0 0.02. And we're going to multiply both of these values by the noise scale, both of the coordinate values. So we're still stepping through the coordinates oops, along with the point, but we're just grabbing the X and Y value, or we're grabbing the noise at a much more zoomed in. Hopefully that makes sense. And it should, if you see it visually, this should look very different. And it does. So this is starting to resemble, like if you actually Google Perlin noise, it'll look a lot more like this instead of that, very zoomed out. So that's one example of using the scale. If we just alter the scale one more time, it should be not a lot of color difference. Yeah, so it's, we're essentially looking at a very, if you could imagine the darker parts of this image as higher elevation, because that's essentially what we're saying, it's a higher value. The higher the value, the larger this number will eventually be, which means the black is gonna show through more. Hopefully that makes sense. So when you're looking at this image, imagine that the white is lower elevation, closer to zero, and the black or gray is higher elevation, closer to one. And if you can visualize it like that, you can already start to see how you would use this to literally simulate elevation in graphics projects or in video games. So just to give you a quick example of that, we are going to change the colors that we're using for the point, and we're also only going to draw points at certain elevation levels. So I think we can get almost kind of an island situation working pretty quickly. So I'm using a color picker off screen. Let's change our background to more of a blue color. I'm gonna say 153, 196, 204. I realize this isn't going to be extremely accurate to the ocean's color. Okay, ignore the black for now. We just wanted to set the background to more of a blue color. Now we don't want to apply the noise at every, or I should say we don't want to draw a point at every pixel, or we don't want to color every pixel differently. We only want to color the pixels that are above a certain elevation. So if you're thinking about an island, most of it's going to be water. We're not saying that water is zero. We're saying that water is somewhere between zero and one, and everything above water is land. So let's just say 0.5 for right now. So we'll say if noise, well, we'll just copy this, I guess. Well, not even that. We're just going to get the noise value first. So we'll say n equals that. So we have the noise if n is greater than 0 0.5. We're, we're essentially saying that the sea level is equal to 0.5. Then we're going to set the stroke. Well, let's just run this just to see. Most of it should remain, yeah. So we've got a lot of water and we've got these kind of dark areas. The reason that you're not seeing like a quick fade from blue into the dark is because by the time we actually start coloring, it's already above 0.5, which means we're at like 125, 127, or 127, 128. So it's, it's pretty dark already. So that's working a little bit. Let's actually zoom back out a little bit so you can see more land being drawn. Yeah, so already I think you can kind of see the power of Perlin noise. I mean we've got 14 lines of code and we're getting this archipelago, ar ar archipelago, arch I think it's archipelago. So now if it's above 0.5 we're gonna do this but what we really want to do now we don't have to keep playing with the opacity we're just gonna draw in solid colors. So if it's above 0.5 we're gonna say stroke 204, 192, 155. But we don't have to just stop there. That's just above sea level, which means we'll imagine this kind of sandy color. If it's above, let's say, 0.7, actually, that doesn't need to be an elif because 
if I say if greater than 5 else if greater than 0.7, then that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. We kind of want to call it procedurally, and we're just going to deal with the fact that we're going to draw it, or we're going to say stroke there. This isn't going to be the most efficient or, or prettiest application of Perlin noise, but I think it'll be useful. So if n is greater than 0.7, let me come back over to my color picker. So we're going stroke for the beachy color, the tan color. Then we got to go green. I guess I'll try to do like a dark green. So we'll say stroke 96, 117, 94. And then again, so if n is greater than, let's say 0.85 this time. And we're going to make it, so you got water, beach, green, which will kind of represent the forest. And then we'll say rock, mountain, kind of like a, you know, like rock is peeking out from the, the forest. So stroke, just a gray color. I don't really need the color picker for that. I don't know why I'm doing it, but here we are. So stroke, 150, 150, 150 is great. It's a lighter gray. So if we draw the point, it'll draw even if none of this happened, which means whichever one ever gets called, it'll just draw that for the rest of the time. So we need to put this, like I said, this isn't the prettiest, but we'll just, if n is greater than 0.5. Let's just call this for now because I just want to kind of show what this looks like. Hopefully this will work. I changed the noise value back to a smaller value. That doesn't look great. I think it's working, but it just doesn't look very good. I think it's because, well, primarily the beaches are just way too large. So five, th let's do five, four. I think my, just my mental kind of scale. So that looks better. These colors aren't very good. My blue is maybe way too bright. Let's, let's walk the blue down a little bit. I'm getting caught up in the minutia right now because this is this doesn't really benefit the tutorial about Perlin noise specifically. This is not a tutorial on color design, which I am definitely interested in doing. Not 258, 158. Let's bike that blue down a little bit. That's a little bit better. There's just not enough division between. Ideally, I would kind of like to have a border there. Now the forests are a little bit too big, but we want more rock popping through, so let's put this at 0.6, and that's way too much, so 0.7. I want to get these islands kind of showing, so that's okay, we'll stick with that for now. This video went a little bit longer than I expected, and I rambled a little bit like I always do, but hopefully it has been helpful. If you learned something new, remember to hit the subscribe button, and I will see you in the next video.